A warm welcome to TV Africa News and thank you for always joining us. This is Africa Today. My name is Najma Luima, but first are the headlines. <music> National Unit Platform Party to cut shillings 1 million from MPs shillings 200 million to finance party headquarters. <music> Uganda likely to vaccinate half of its population in 2033. And in sports, Wakiso Giant parts ways with winger Mugume. A warm welcome once again. Now the news in detail. Opposition National Unit Platform Party has revealed that at least shillings one million will be slashed off each party MP's shillings two hundred million received from government to buy brand new cars. The party said the money will be used to facilitate a string of services which include the construction of party offices. We have more. In an interview with the media, Opposition Chief Whip Mr. John Baptist Nambeshe indicated that the new plowmakers had voluntarily resolved to commit at least 1 million shillings to finance party activities. He added this had nothing to do with the superior of the party, Mr. Robert Chagulani Sentamu, compelling one to pay a certain amount. Mr. Nambeshe, also Manjia County MP, declined to divulge details of the structure to be built and only say that they will cross the bridge when they come to it. On Wednesday, the Director of Parliament said that government had availed funds to the legislative arm to facilitate each of the 529 MPs and the 26 ex-official members to purchase brand cars. However, the new MPs will not have the entire amount considering that they agreed and resolved that part of the monies would be used to bankroll the construction of party premises and other logistical courts pressed on the party administration. Leader of Opposition in Parliament, Matthias Mpuga, has said that the country will likely realize its target of vaccinating half of its population after 12 years. Mpuga said that the country's over-reliance on donations in the fight against COVID-19 puts the country in a disadvantaged position to achieve its vaccination goal. Nalugo has more. Mpuga made these remarks on the floor of Parliament while replying to Prime Minister Robin Nabanja's statement on government's COVID-19 response. In her speech, Nabanja had earlier expressed concerns with the low rate of vaccination in the country, saying that the vaccination of at least 20 million more people is the only way the country can fully open up. Mpuga, in his response, said that government's approach in acquiring vaccines is shameful and will only put lives of Ugandans at risk much longer. According to the Ministry of Health data, Uganda has currently vaccinated only 1,106,762 people of the targeted population of at least 21.9 million people. Mbuga said that apart from an order placed to Serum Institute of India for AstraZeneca, there seems no other payment has been made which is alarming according to him. Nabanja said that due to the context of global scarcity, government was also considering searching for available sources of vaccines through its missions abroad. Apart from that, amidst the surge in COVID-19 cases in Uganda, CIPLA recently donated medication to joint medical stores to help ease the symptoms for patients fighting the disease. Body aches and pains are one of the symptoms of COVID-19, and CIPLA recently launched an effervescent paracetamol tablet, Cipladon, which helps to relieve pain twice as fast as ordinary paracetamol tablet. Nahabwe has more. The CEO of CIPLA, Nevin Bradford, said they are cognizant of the fact that COVID-19 cases have increased tremendously in the past couple of months and it has impacted negatively on the health of Ugandans and the economy at large. He said that is why CIPLA is trying to help by providing the necessary medication to Ugandans through its medicine that relieve pain, which can be a symptom of COVID-19. 
In this respect, he said, Cipla has donated a total of 5,000 doses of Cipladon and will continue to make more donations to reach at least 25,000 patients through faith-based organizations. Bradford said that, at CIPLA, they are focused on ensuring access to quality, affordable medication as part of Africa for Africa strategy and commitment to caring for life. Reporting for TV Africa News, Nahawe Kajira. Let's take a very quick short break. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News, The Right to Know. A member of parliament from North Kivu province, Jean Paul Palukunga Hangondi, has cited several reasons for the abolition of the state of siege in the justice sector. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the state of siege was extended for the fourth time on Friday, July 17th, by the National Assembly. Jean Paul Paluku Ngahangondi, a provincial lawmaker elected from Lubero, believes that the state of siege should be applied to other facets of life and not to justice in the two provinces concerned. During his recent visit to the city of Goma, President Felix Shisekedi had affirmed that there is a positive evolution regarding the state of siege in the two provinces. For the Congolese head of state, it is necessary to wait to judge this measure by his government. Some inhabitants of Goma are convinced that there has been no positive change since the proclamation of the state of siege in North Chivu, but some have hope for change in the future. Out of the 339 MPs who took part in the vote, 337 voted for the extension of the state of siege in North Chivu, Ituri, and two others abstained. Moving on, Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara will meet his predecessor, Roland Abagbo, on July 27th, according to the presidential spokesperson, on Wednesday this week. The meeting between the two main figures in the politics of Ivory Coast is looked at as a huge step towards national reconciliation. This meeting, the first since Bagbo's return to Abjan in mid-June after a decade in exile and years of legal procedures at the International Criminal Court, is awaited by many in the West African country as a step further towards national reconciliation. Otara and Bagbo, two of the main figures of Ivorian politics in the last 30 years, had faced off in the 2010 presidential election. As both Otara and Bagbo claimed victory in the vote, the country was plugged into deep, violent political crisis. The United Nations estimate over 3,000 people died as Ivorian security forces and pro-Ultera militants fought for power. After a month back in the country, Bagbo already met with key players of the opposition, such as the former president and political rival Henry Conan. Madagascar said on Thursday it had foiled an attempt to assassinate various Malagasy figures, amongst which President Andri Rajalin is. Six people, two of them are French nationals, according to dem diplomatic sources, have been arrested. A reporter, Kachanchi Hasmo. Minister of Public Security Rodlais Randria Nelson told the press that, according to all investigations they have made, the people arrested are involved in the assassination attempt of the head of state of Madagascar. He added that the arrest followed all the norms and were not made by mercenaries but by the police. He said that six people were arrested including among them two Malagasy who are binationals, 
a foreigner and other Malagasy. The announcement of the assassination plot comes after several months of turbulence and threats to journalists reporting on the country's coronavirus pandemic and bargaining filming in the south of the country. On Madagascar's Independence Day celebrations on June 26th, the Gendamari announced they had foiled an assassination murder on their boss, General Richard Ravalomanana, who is also Rajoelina's right-hand man. President Rajoelina first seized power in March 2019 from Mark Ravalomanana with the backing of the military and has since then ruled over the island country. He won the last vote in December 2018, beating his main rival and predecessor Ravalomanana in an election set by allegations of fraud. Moving on, Haiti's first lady, Martin Moise, made her first public appearance since arriving in the northern coastal city of Cap Haitian during a small private ceremony in memory of her husband and slain President Jovenel Moise. Authorities in Haiti are still investigating in July 7th attack on the president's home during which Jovenel Moise was shot dead and Martin, and Martin Moise was seriously wounded, but a lot remains unknown. During the first public appearance, Haiti's first lady, Martin Moise, did not make any public comments. Newly named Prime Minister Ariel Henry offered his condolences along with other government officials. A priest told mourners at a memorial service on Thursday for slain President Jovenel Moise that too much blood is being shed in Haiti as authorities warned of more violence ahead of his funeral. The Reverend Jane Giles same spoke to dozens of people wearing white t-shirts emblazoned with Moise's picture. 26 suspects have been arrested by authorities, including three police officers and 18 former Colombian soldiers. Another seven high-ranking police officials have been detained but not formally arrested. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching TV African News of the Right. To know in our business news today, thousands of government supporters gathered at Mesekel Square in Addis Ababa on Thursday to celebrate the second filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dawn. Those joining the rally also made a show of support for the Ethiopian military while denouncing rebels in the country's Tigri region. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has caused controversy with Egypt and Sudan being in dispute with the building and feeling of it. The demonstration organized by the city administration of Addis Ababa is the first public rally after the national election held in June. Mayor Adanek Abebe, who spoke at the rally, congratulated Ethiopians' resolve at getting the dam refilled saying she was standing with and supporting their defense and security forces more than ever before. The demonstrators who gathered from different parts of Addis Ababa at the Maskel Square have been very vocal in denouncing the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, which is designated by the House of People's Representatives of Ethiopia as a terrorist organization. After eight months of fierce fighting, a ceasefire came into effect some weeks ago, between forces affiliated to the Ethiopian government and the TPLF. In our health news today, Burkina Faso on Tuesday night received a shipment of more than 150,000 Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine doses. It is a gift from the U.S. through the COVAX initiative that should help speed up vaccination in Burkina Faso, which, like other countries of the continent, suffers from vaccine shortages. Burkina Faso Health Minister Professor Chalemain Odrago said during a handover ceremony alongside U.S. Ambassador 
to Burkina Faso Sandra Clark that says vaccination is voluntary. They are going to continue sensitizing efforts so that they have community acceptance and commitment towards the practice. Vaccination levels across Africa are still very low, with less than 2% of the continent's population of 1.3 billion having received at least one shot according to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to help alleviate the vaccine shortage on the continent. The U.S. has begun delivering the first batches of the 25 million doses of vaccines it is sharing with the African Union. Senegal, Burkina Faso and Gambia are amongst the first nations to get the Janzen jab. Ethiopia and Djibouti are also receiving doses. The effort has delivered only 200 million vaccines globally since February, while the U.S. alone has administered more than 338 million doses. In our sports and news today, Wakiso Giants FC has confirmed the report that its winger, Yasin Mogume, has left the club following the expiry of his contract. According to the statement on the club's website, everyone at the club wished Mogume all the best for the future. Kachanchu has more on this report. In a statement released on the club official website, the club thanked Mugume for his services since joining them from Rwanda's Royal Sport in 2019. Part of the statement on the club's website read that Yasin Mugume and Wakiso Giants have parted ways following the expiry of the winger's contract. In total, Mugume made 25 appearances for the Sharks, scoring four goals across all competitions. Mugume was crucial for the Purple Sharks as they gained promotion to the top tier in 2019 but missed half of the 2019-2020 season through injury. Last season, the silky-footed winger started well but later lost his starting position when the club signed Ivan Bogere and Frank Sevofu. He has previously played for KCCA, UPDF, the Saints and Police in Uganda. Before we end on his bulletin today, let's do take a recap of our top stories. National Unit Platform Party to cut shillings 1 million from MPs shillings 200 million to finance party headquarters. Uganda likely to vaccinate half of its population in 2033. And in sports, Wakiso Giant part ways with winger Mugume. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it TV Africa. Please do stay tuned to my programming coming your way. This is Africa, and that was the news.